very good morning to everyone uh, today i came with one more topic that is uh, last working method of the it manufacturing this is a fourth method the name of the method is how does direct metal laser sintering okay direct metal laser sintering work so for your more understanding purpose like uh, how i am going to explain with the uh, a laminated object manufacturing LOM how I did know like this animated video I taken the screenshot and I explained everything you know clear picture clear idea will get in the previous class okay today I came with the very important topic direct means we can in the in short form you call as a DMLS direct metal laser centering so metal laser sintering already we know that because in the selective laser sintering when we were studying the class uh, we are uh, understanding the meaning of what is a laser what is the expansion of laser then what is the meaning of sintering even this is thing is that the slight difference of these two here the very we are going to use direct metal also metal we are going to use and we are going to sintering sintering in the sense it is going to be a uh, we call it as a uh, depositions or you can melt okay deposition or you can melt it means in Canada we it means it's a different words you use but for uh, for the more um, for the uh, class point of view sintering in the sense you have to just you have to understand deposition or you can call it, call it as a melting when it comes to the uh, working principle I will explain clearly what is actually sintering so direct metal laser sintering means the main source of the sintering process is laser because we are also in this process also we are going to use laser as a main source input of the process so uh, I today I would like to explain uh, this working principle as well as the applications of uh, rapid prototyping because each and every classes we are going to use the prototype rapid prototyping and all so for that purpose I would like to explain the application as well as the uh, yeah, extra things I am going to be explaining you people okay so the thing is that I came with the news I will go for the new slide then you will understand clear see this is what you can able to see in the image it's a chambers are there <coughs> first chamber and second chamber third chambers are there means we call as a hooper and second chamber is a main working principle working table and last one is a storage because here what we will do in the first chamber we are going to fill with the material okay which are for example iron material if you want to fill it in the first chamber and second chamber is called as a main working main the workplace will be put, happened over here and last one is a store whatever the after the completion of the work okay machining process what we will do that whatever the unused that metal will come and collect in the last chamber okay three chambers are the first second third okay this one is going to be just it going to move from left to le right right to left Those, these are the chambers so i hope you understand clearly diagram so come to the next slide so here this is the main working so uh, i would like to spend more time on here only because see here in this whatever the supporting part is there you no know, that part only it is going to be movements you can call it as a roller also means in the by the manual hand diagram we, we use that uh, whatever the blue color is there you no know, that part we call as a roller because a roller what will helps it going to be carry the material from uh, this uh, first chamber to the third chamber okay whatever the in the first chamber how you going to uh, fill the material okay a roller will helps to carry from the first chamber to the last chamber because the roller is the main work is that carry the material okay so in the first chamber you can just see that metal is there that metal powder that is going to be moved from first chamber to second chamber in the second chamber you can be able to see that one red color line is there that is actually laser light a laser is going to be making the component whatever the finished product means so if you if you want to create the component no, that actually working is going to be happen over here okay this same principle working principle already i discussed in the class also i already discussed in the online class also for the selective laser centering with the diagram i clearly mentioned that 
okay if you means if you those who are at, attending that class those who are present in that class you people will clearly understand that okay no doubt in this you can just you to see here three whole uh then three round shapes machines uh, product is going to be designed next after that that whatever the roller is moved from this side whatever the unused material is come and fall in the last chamber see here go to the next slide see here recoater blade so i said that it is moving it just start moved this is a shifted place from one to second it is started uh, see here in the third and it is see here the collection container i said that is whatever the collected collection container or collection chamber you can call it as yes, no problem collection chamber is a last chamber okay from the first is a main is we are going to be built or we are going to store the uh, material whatever the material you are going to use for that then again this is the main is working chamber okay actual component is going to be produced in the third second chamber and after that okay collection chamber whatever the extra things extra material we are going to be collected in the last chamber that is a collection container okay see you people will clearly understand how how actually component is going to be produced in in initially in the first slide when i mentioned that direct metal laser sintering sintering means it is going to be a depositing and melting laser laser means light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation unit will be there the mirror is there okay see here this is blue color you can able to see it in the top portion of the diagram it's a blue color we call it as a laser unit and whatever the laser unit from the from the laser unit is going to be hit the mirror then here see here then mirror is going to be reflecting that whatever the laser light to the second chamber then second chamber what shape of the product you want that is going to be cut with the help of that laser light not only cut whatever different operations also you can able to do in the direct metal laser center laser centering and a direct dmls and sls is the main difference is that in that laser selective laser centering means we are going to use it as a abs and polythene poly uh, whatever the nylon and some kind of different resins materials we are going to use it. but in the uh, direct metal the, we are going to use it as a material it's the main difference of these two process or remaining rest all the working principle is 100% similar to the selective laser sintering as well as direct metal laser sintering okay very important and very similar means if you are in your exam anyone they will ask you can write once if once you once you perfect in the machining process in the laser selective definitely write in the DMLS also this is one trick and comes to the point is very important applications okay application of rapid prototyping can be classified into three categories because we are going to be uh, repeating the words in the IoT manufacturing process since from uh, first class to after that four classes we have four to five classes we are discussing the rapid prototyping so what is actual application of that then what is uh, how we are going to categorizing that that I am going to discuss it with the slide you people will clearly understand because in the clearly slide is going to be appearing Applications of rapid prototyping can be classified into three categorizes. First one is design. Second one is engineering analysis and planning. And third one is tooling and manufacturing. So this is the main three categories of the rapid prototyping applications. Okay. So comes to the point one point uh, one one by one. Okay. I hope you understand the DMLS yes or no that is similar to the selective laser sintering machine okay what the only difference is that just we are going to using their nylon handle ABS handle here we are going to use the material that is the main difference okay comes to design designer also are able to confirm their design by building a real physical model in minimum time using RP designer are able to confirm their design by building a real physical model in minimum time using rp means rp means designer are able to confirm their design by building a real physical model minimum mean what they will do designer is there no if the designer can what he will do confirm the design first he will be 
able to conform their design building a real physical because if you want to produce a product in a real time what you will do you have to prepare the rapid prototype means small prototype the model you have to prepare it if it is any problem faced in the preparing the prototype you will come to know that how to solve this problem okay if anything you will not get in the properly shaped in the prototype prototype you will come to know that why it is going to be facing the problem what is the mistakes of that see everything you will come to know in the first point is design are of able to confirm their design by building a real physical uh, model in minimum time because for the preparing prototype it will need very less time within less time within less cost we are going to be preparing at least you will come to know that because instead of going for the facing in the real time problem so you are preparing the prototype then you will get a uh, then you will get a solutions easily after that once it is clear your doubts and go for the main uh, real time problems you have to build in the shapes of the any components next thing is in engineers engineering analysis and planning we will be able to do stress analysis flow analysis mock up so once it is going to be preparing the material then engineers analysis means what are the your expectations your analysis and planning will be there uh, we will be able to do stress analysis flow analysis because use a different softwares okay give different dimensions and material you want to select it then you will come to know that what is going to be stress analysis is there what is the fm and ansys okay different softwares we are going to use and you will find out the whatever the design factors okay this is a one of the very interest very important for the rapid prototyping and last point it will help them to visualize the object early detection of the design error reduced lead times what it will do whatever the rope ro rapid prototyping it going to be help to the uh, it will help to visualize the object object what will do once it producing the ro robot or uh, rapid prototyping uh, physically object you will able to see you will visualize okay how it is look like then how the parts is going to be arranged then what is the mistakes going to be happened what is the error going to be happened why it is not going to be prototype is not working like this okay what are the problems we going to face what is maybe may just a mistakes in the design on all the all the way of errors you will able to find in the rapid prototype so in their time so that it will help them to visualize the object early detection of the error design errors reduce time the early time because very short time it going to be completed okay so you don't take much time to the complete the these things so i think i hope this is a one of the very simple and applications of robot prototyping as well as dml as we are going to discussing today i hope you everyone understanding okay if any doubts are there please contact me and whatsapp me and you have to understand me okay so clearly please you have to contact me without missing okay